Hello, and thank you for joining us today for another episode of Things to Know Right Now. Today, we will be discussing deep brain stimulation, otherwise known as DBS. And joining us today is Maya Gurin of Boston Scientific, which is a medical device company that was created, it has created, and it was created to give a really different and incredible um, deep brain stimulation device. I think everyone needs to know that there is more than one device in the world today and that those knowing those devices is critically important. And that's why this meeting is critically important. So let's start out by defining, Maya, what, um, what is DBS? Yeah, thank you so much for having me on, Joe, and all the work you do at Parkinson's Resource Organization. Um, I know the community appreciates it, uh, as do we. So um, deep brain stimulation, or DBS, as we call it, is essentially a surgical therapy. And it's for when patients who are on medications for their Parkinson's disease, um, and the medications are working, but they're not working as effectively as they used to. So this kind of surgical therapy comes in and it involves implanting a very kind of small pace-like device in the chest uh, that sends mild electrical impulses to targeted portions of the brain. And that surgical therapy and that pulse is um, essentially closing what we believe is an abnormal circuit in the brain and in turn helps with the movement symptoms of Parkinson's so other disease. Other than dyskinesia, or tremors. Is DBS used for anything else? Yeah. So when we say deep brain stimulation helps with the movement symptoms of Parkinson's, I think people always think of the dyskinesia, that kind of the Michael J. Fox look, um, as well as the tremors, which both of those are combated and helped with DBS. But it also helps with the stiffness and the slowness, as well as kind of that postural instability as um, the disease progresses. So those are three additional symptoms that deep brain stimulation helps with. And I think the one, while it's not as captivating as, you know, seeing the tremor stop, it's that stiffness and that slowness that I think a lot of patients who have had DBS really are like, wow, I have never felt this relaxed in my body. So those are very kind of key, important symptoms to understand that are helped with so DBS. Part of it. Can this be done in any hospital? No, it does require a multidisciplinary team of doctors and specialized doctors that essentially do this for a living. So when I say multidisciplinary, that involves a movement disorder specialist, which is a neurologist that specializes in movement disorders, as well as a functionally trained neurosurgeon. So that is a surgeon that has specialized focus in targeting the brain for these, for these deep brain stimulation systems, as well as a neuropsychologist who um, does you know, continuous testing for the patient, and other kind of specialties such as physical therapists and occupational therapists. So it does take a team. And so a patient should always go to a center that has that team and has performed continuous and a fair amount of these types of surgeries. I felt so honored to be with someone who had this surgery done. Um, and um, it's, it's awesome. When it works, it is plumb awesome. Um, is there a recovery time involved? And if so, how much? Yeah, so typically after the surgery, you stay in the hospital for one to two days. But I, from talking with uh, patients, you know, a surgeon will say, you can get up the next day and you're fine. And, you know, but uh, there is some time because you're under anesthesia, because you've had a hardware place, it does take time. So I'd say three to six weeks um, after surgery is when you kind of start feeling a little sense of normalcy again. And, you know, I've heard some patients say, you know, I got a little bit of a headache for a few weeks that kind of lingered, um, which again, not 
the biggest deal, but it's something to keep in mind when you're considering this surgery. Um, as well as, you know, when patients are hospitalized with Parkinson's disease, even in the centers that do this, the medication regimen is a little bit off. And I know that throws a lot of people off in terms of how they feel in the next few days after surgery. So, um, you know, expect to just not feel the best for, for at least a few days after surgery, but I've seen it kind of linger for, for a few weeks. It makes sense only because the brain in, you know, becomes inflammatory or inflamed after the surgical procedures, like in anything, whether it be the brain or any other part of the body, it swells and, and needs to c- compress back to its normal size. You know, as I said earlier, there are at least three different types of deep brain stimulation devices. What do you think sets Boston Scientific apart? Yeah, I'm very proud to be part of this particular team and the device that we create, because I think what a lot of people don't realize is once you get the system in, that's only the beginning of the journey. Your kind of long-term relationship is with the programming neurologist who optimizes it and shapes it and really customs, custom tailors it to you and your symptoms and what we want to help you with. And so I think while from a hardware perspective, there's a lot of similarities between the the different systems, the way in which we can program and the way in which we can optimize our system is far more superior than others. We do have a really great um, kind of system involved with Boston Scientific where we're able to get the specific anatomy of your brain and specifically where that electrode is placed and give that to the neurologist. So they're not, you know, kind of guessing around, seeing what's going to help you. They'll be able to see, okay, this is where we need to stimulate because in your brain, this is where this is. So it's really kind of, it's cut programming time by 50 to 75%. So you're not in that office constantly trying to optimize um, it's been it's been a game changer in a lot of ways. Oh, and I remember when it, when you first came on board, um, it was amazing to me to see those electrodes and the difference that they were compared to what was being done for many years before that. Um, and yeah, and the team extraordinary, just extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, how does a person know if the device is working? Yeah, so essentially the system is on 24 seven. After it's optimized, you kind of, it's on, it's working in the background, you sleep, you wake up, it's kind of steady. You do get a remote control. So if there are any instances where you feel like your movement symptoms are returning, let's say you're like, "Hmm, my tremor is a little bit bad today. What might be happening? You can always use the remote and it tells you whether or not the therapy is on or off. So essentially, that shouldn't really happen. It shouldn't turn off without, you know, without you doing it. But if it does, you would feel your movement symptoms return. You know, let's go back to the surgical part of it a little bit, um, because as I understand it, the person is not, uh, is not put under anesthesia during this time. They're You're right. Awake. Yep. They're awake. They, um, it involves because with, we need such fine precision. I'm talking Submillimeter movements in the brain. There's, I mean, let's talk about real estate there. They want to make sure they put it exactly where it needs to be. The patient needs to be tested and awake and testing those tremors and testing the stiffness just to make sure that we got it in the right spot for that patient. It's, so it's extraordinary. Yes. Between, yeah. between the, the patient being awake and the and the imaging that is going on while this is happening, it, it's really extraordinary to, to see and to know the help that is out there for people with advanced, if you will, Parkinson's symptoms. Um, maybe we should touch on the fact that occasionally the, the machinery or the device needs to be changed out. Does that happen with Boston Scientific? And if so, how does a person know? Yeah, so essentially the the electrodes that are placed in the brain do not ever need to be replaced. We don't want to go back in there unless there's 
you know, a, a reason to remove it. So that stays for the duration of the person's life. The little pacemaker device that's put into the chest, there's two options. There's the non-rechargeable, which is a battery you put in, you set it, you forget it. And that requires a procedure, a surgery, while not overnight, it's still a surgery to remove and replace every, depending on the settings, every three to five years. That is one option. There is the rechargeable option, which is a smaller device that lives here as well, that needs to be replaced every 15 years. And, but the only kind of caveat is it requires you to charge it. Charging is very simple. It's a wireless collar that you put on and that you do about a half an hour to an hour a week. If you want, you're even to do it, you're even able to do it once a month where you just, you know, put it on for a few hours. So that is an option for patients that don't want to come back to the hospital every three to five years to replace. And as I understand it, Boston Scientific was the first one to have that rechargeable. We are really known for our easy to charge rechargeable system. I mean, it's, it's very, very easy to use and we sell them if any. And I've been working with the company for many years now, get calls saying, you know, how do I do this? Very simple to use. Yeah. And yeah. so is it covered by insurance? It is. It's a Medicare covered benefit. It's covered by most PPO insurances as well as HMO insurances. Some insurance companies need specific documentation to say, hey, they're kind of bad enough to need this. Um, but if you're working with the DBS center, they are more than equipped to provide that information to insurance companies. Again, the team is so spot on with, with what they do and how they handle and work with the with the patient, if you will. It's yeah. it's really extraordinary. And I'm really part happy to be a part of what Boston Scientific brings to the table. You know, um, for the audience, Boston Scientific is in our wellness village, which is there's a URL on the screen that you can go to. And you can listen to and watch a video on specifically on how Boston Scientific's DBS device works. And I think you would find that very interesting, but you'll also find it interesting that the representatives from this company are available. We have a phone number. I think Maya's phone number is on our yeah. wellness village right now, and you can call them. But if she's not in your territory, if she's not where you live, then we can help you find another representative that can um, follow up and work with you on questions that you want answered, who to see, who not to see, when to see, all of those things. Um, it's They're really an incredible team. Thank you. And I do want to reiterate that too, as well as we have patient ambassadors who have gone through the surgery because I could talk about it until I'm blue in the face, but I don't have the disease, nor have I had the surgery. So we can also connect you to patients who have had it. And you can talk to them about the questions that you think are important. Right. The, you know, the only thing I really want to drive home is, uh, you know, 96% of patients say they would do it again. And from the conversations I've had with patients, if you're the right candidate, they are always saying, I wish I even had it sooner. So um, I know it's a brain surgery is a big deal. I, I'm not going to minimize that. But if you are at all interested, talk to your movement disorder specialist and see if it's even on the table for you. And we started out by saying right candidate and we're ending by saying right candidate because not everyone is a candidate. People who have Parkinson-isms, for instance, would more than likely not be a candidate for this procedure. So knowing your movement disorder specialist, knowing all of the team members that are involved gives you the confidence that you need to, to go forward to have this procedure done or not. Um, exactly. And again, that's where, where Boston Scientific and the help of Parkinson's Resource Organization comes in because we have fortunately along the way gained a tremendous amount of knowledge about things that are available for people with Parkinson's and for their family members. So you will see this on YouTube, on our, our, on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already done so um, to get other videos that we produce on a regular basis. 
and um, and also like us on all of the social media pages and and keep us keep knowing us out there because we bring tremendous content to you like Maya's conversation this morning. Please feel free to reach out to Maya. Please feel reach to reach out to Parkinson's Resource Organization. Maya, I am always so thrilled, so thrilled to have you in my sphere of influence and um, to talk to and let our constituents know just one more thing that they need to know about right now and what's available to them. Thank you so much, Joe, and happy early birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, you don't get this old doing nothing, I think. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> But it's a good thing. It is a really good thing. It's so a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I will talk to you really soon. Okay, take care. Thank